Hey guys, there are so many X Super consoles that it's confusing, but I'm here to gradually go into detail about these devices. And today we're going to talk about the X3 Cube. I've talked about the Retro X Cube before, but today we're going to talk about a more powerful console that can deliver games on modern consoles with acceptable performance. So come with me and I'll show you. Moving on to the technical side, the X3 Cube is equipped with the AmLogic SoC, which has a quad-core ARM CPU operating at 1.91 GHz. The GPU is an ARM Mali G31, responsible for graphics processing. The device has 4 GB of RAM and 32 GB of ROM storage. In terms of software, the console runs two operating systems. Android TV 9 and Emuelic 4.5, the latter aimed at emulating retro games. This configuration allows the X3 Cube to offer a versatile experience combining the features of an Android TV device with the emulation capabilities of several classic consoles. As such, this chipset scores 133 points in the Geekbench 5 single core test. Geekbench is a popular benchmark application used to evaluate the performance of electronic devices such as smartphones, tablets, and computers. The single core result of 133 points is consistent with what you would expect from a quad-core Cortex A55 processor operating at 1.91 GHz. Um, regarding the multi-core score of 454, we can infer that it would be plausible for this SoC, considering that generally the multi-core score is significantly higher than the single core in multi-core processors. These figures translate into solid performance for emulating games up to the era of the Nintendo 64, PlayStation Portable, and Dreamcast. In practice, this means that the console handles most games from these systems well, offering a fluid gaming experience most of the time. Older consoles, up to the PlayStation 1, run smoothly with practically perfect emulation. For Nintendo 64, PlayStation Portable, and Dreamcast, most games are playable, although some more demanding titles may show occasional minor performance drops. It's important to note that emulation relies heavily on single-core performance, and the S900 5X3 offers a decent balance between individual and multi-core processing power. We'll come back to this topic later in this video. Now let's talk about design and connectivity, and I'll be brief. The X3 Cube catches the eye with its design inspired by the classic NES, bringing a dose of nostalgia to fans of retro games. The console is compact, making it easy to fit into any entertainment setup. On the front, there are four USB ports, allowing multiple controllers to be connected simultaneously for multiplayer gaming sessions. A notable feature is the dual cooling system, which includes a built-in fan and a heat sink. This helps keep the device running steadily even during long gaming sessions, avoiding overheating problems that can affect performance. In terms of connectivity, the X3 Cube offers versatile options. It supports dual-band Wi-Fi, allowing a fast and stable wireless connection for downloading games or streaming. It also has an Ethernet port for those who prefer a wired connection for greater stability. These connectivity options not only make it easier to update the system and download new games, but also allow the use of online resources in certain emulators and the Android TV system. In addition to these visual issues, the usability of the software has to be up to scratch, so let's see how it is. It offers a user experience divided into two distinct operating systems. Emoelic, based on Corelic, is the main interface for games. Wow, what complicated names. Let's move on. When you start the console, you're greeted by a clean and intuitive home screen where you can easily browse your library of games, organized by console. The Emoelic interface is optimized for use with a controller, allowing you to quickly navigate between the different systems and games. Android TV 9 works as a secondary system, accessible via an option in the Emoelic main menu. 
This familiar Android TV interface allows you to install and use streaming apps, turning the console into a complete entertainment center. Initial configuration is relatively simple. When you turn on the console for the first time, you are guided through a basic configuration process, including Wi-Fi connection and language settings. On the Emu Elec, the games are already pre-installed and organized, so you can start playing almost immediately. Navigating between the two systems is done via a reboot menu, where you can choose to start Emu Elec or Android TV. Having finished that, Let's move on to the games and practical performance, shall we? The X3 Cube comes with an impressive library of more than 60,000 pre-installed games covering various eras of gaming. This vast collection is complemented by support for over 70 different emulators, offering a wide range of options for retro gaming enthusiasts. In performance tests, the console demonstrates varying capabilities depending on the era and complexity of the emulated systems. For systems such as the Nest, Master System, and Game Boy, the X3 Cube offers practically perfect emulation. With its Amalogic sock, these games run smoothly, maintaining stable frame rates and minimal loading times. That's the least we can hope for, I guess. Let's move on to the next one. The Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, and PC Engine emulation is also excellent. The X3 Cube's hardware handles these systems with ease, offering an experience very close to the original hardware. Special effects such as Mode 7 from the SNES are reproduced faithfully. So far, so good. For PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn, performance is generally very good. Most games run at full speed, with some more demanding titles showing occasional small frame rate drops. PlayStation 1 emulation is particularly solid, benefiting from the processing power. Remember that the Saturn's architecture is complex to emulate in its entirety. Nintendo 64 emulation is a highlight of the X3 Cube. Many popular games run well, although some more complex titles may require adjustments to the emulator settings to optimize performance. And here we have the same problem as the Saturn which is a great presentation, but it does very well. The Dreamcast poses a greater challenge, but the X3 Cube manages to emulate many games with satisfactory performance. Some more demanding titles may show frame rate drops or require adjustments to the settings for better playability. Now let's take a look at the PSP. PSP emulation is surprisingly good on the X3 Cube, Many games run at speeds close to the original, although more complex titles may require a reduction in resolution or other adjustments to maintain smooth performance. Now here, we have to be honest. Heavier games, such as the well-known God of War, will run at 15 or 20 FPS and this may be playable for many people and impossible for others. Be aware of this. Overall, the X3 Cube's performance is impressive for its category, offering solid emulation all the way back to the Dreamcast and PSP era. The balance between the single-core and multi-core performance of its chipset allows the console to cope well with a variety of systems, making it a versatile option for retro gaming fans. It's important to note that performance can vary depending on the specific game and the emulator settings. The ability to adjust settings allows users to find the ideal balance between visual quality and performance for each game. <laughs> right, so it stands out as an attractive option in the retro console market, with prices ranging from $76 to $120, depending on the configuration chosen. Strong points include its vast library of pre-installed games, solid emulation performance all the way back to the Dreamcast and PSP era, and the versatility offered by the dual system. The hardware, based on the latest AmLogic SO C, provides a fluid gaming experience for most classic titles. Among the weak points, we can mention some limitations in emulating more recent systems and the possible need for adjustments in more demanding games to get the best performance. In terms of value for money, the X3 Cube offers good value, especially considering the number of games included 
and the variety of systems emulated. However, the 256 gigabyte version with four controllers, although more expensive, can be an excellent option for those looking for a more complete experience. As such, it is recommended for retro gaming enthusiasts looking for an all-in-one solution, and great for casual gamers who want to relive classics without complications. In addition, it can be good for families, thanks to its multiplayer support and variety of games, and is recommended for those who appreciate the convenience of having games and streaming on one device. So that's it folks, I hope this has been useful. Thank you for watching the video. Consider subscribing, leave a like to make it stronger, and see you in the next video.